YouTube, what the crap's going on? Folks, it's been a while. I have been a little bit inconsistent with campaigns, but we've got a big patch here. We've got some time to get some campaign work done, and I'm going to get focused on it. No, this doesn't mean the end of multiplayer battles for the time being, but yes, I'm going to get focused in on some campaign. And we're going to play Gore Rock. I got to show you some Wolfheart campaign. Nakai is kind of a horde campaign, which I did not that long ago with Archaeon. I have not finished a Lizard Mid campaign on the channel. We're going to change that. I'm going to change it right here. Now, when Gorok first emerged from the spawning pool of Itza, his size, pure albino colorings, and lone arrival immediately marked him as a future champion. That's right, folks. This great white lizard doesn't really know pain or fear. It's completely unrelenting in combat, and that shield there apparently had to be hauled down from a mountain of fire by an entire group of Croxigors, and then took an entire generation of skinked artisans to craft it. This is one very tough lizard, and he is going to purge the lands of Lustria from all those who would pillage it or otherwise defile it and go against the plans of the old one. All right, so what are the rules in this campaign? Number one. The start challenge is easy, so I've cranked up the campaign and battle difficulty to very hard. Uh, the other rule for this one is just we finish it. It's a Vortex campaign, so we're going to finish the Vortex campaign. This campaign will have editing. If there ever ends up being a big bog down of turn-ins that aren't very interesting or something like that where I'm having to lay a siege, we will edit it out where you don't have to watch that kind of stuff. Turn-ins will be edited out uh, unless something important happens in the middle of the turn-in, and then I'll show that part. Battles will be cinematic, filmed from replays afterwards. So this should be a streamlined, enjoyable viewing experience. If you have any suggestions along the way, I'm happy to hear it. When you get to the end of this video, if you have enjoyed the episode, make sure you hit a thumbs up, like it, go in the comments, tell me what I can do better, tell me what I did good. Always glad to hear it. But of course, do that when you have watched it. Let's get the campaign started. Since the days of creation, the reptiles have dominated the jungle continent of Lustria. The ignorant call the creatures lizard men. The wise know them as defenders of the world. <laughs> In ages past, the Old Ones had a plan. But then the Stella Gates collapsed, the Old Ones fled, and demons flooded the mortal plane. Led by the Slan, the Lizard Men fought the demons that surged across Lustria. Yet, it was the Elves that created the Great Vortex. that siphoned the world of chaos, withering demon kind. The world was saved, but the vortex endures only because it is bolstered by the power of the slan, via the great warding. If the warding should fail, the demons will return. The forked tongue of Sotex hangs low in the sky. The slan have felt it. Now I see it brighter, clearer. Its hiss disturbs the winds of magic. Oh, <laughs> 
Alright, welcome to the campaign map. Now, I think to add a few themes to this to be fun, um, in order to uh, kind of really be taking advantage of who the Lizardmen are, we will focus on a geomantic web. So over time, I will really attempt to get a very strong geomantic web. Um, and we're going to really focus our efforts early on purging the Skaven, obviously and then going after Wolfheart's expedition. So that's going to be the order of things. Now the reason, at least one of the reasons why this campaign starts off and says it's easy is because we have Croak. And Croak is ridiculously good. Oh man, replenishment. Ah, they're both good. In any case, uh, yeah, he's got spells that will just absolutely lay waste to infantry and droves. And speaking of, let's go lay waste to some Skaven. <laughs> they want nothing to do with this. Tough luck. Shouldn't have been in the jungle to begin with. Gore the Rock Johnson. Oh, wait. No, just Gore the Rock is about to lay it down hard on a Borg Zap Scruttle. The Battle of Ketza. Where Gorok's going to face against Borg Zap Scruttle. Yes. I'm sure he'll be as sorry as his filthy rat name. Lord Croak and Rock taking their Saurus army with their skink cohort into combat against many clan rats, Skaven slave slingers, and the warlock himself. Here he is, filthy stinking warlock engineer. Croak is going to be the key to these early battles. We'll use his magical abilities to destroy as many enemy infantry as we can each time and every time. So we will be watching for blobs of infantry with Lord Croak. And our first one is present. Let's go watch his spell. If there's anything like watching a bunch of Skaven get absolutely destroyed in high fidelity, then I don't know anything better. Immediately, Croak drops a slightly less powerful bomb on the other side of the battlefield, and we can go find Gorok, the great white lizard here. Chasing out Borg Zap Scruttle. His spine has already yellowed and given up on the fight. Let's go get some close ups of Croak over here as he helps to destroy these clan rats. What an awesome unit! The Skaven are fighting, but they really had no hope here. As with most beginning campaign maps and battles, uh, or battle maps, I should say battles, they're outmatched. <laughs> they are heavily outmatched. And my Saras are going to make relatively quick work of them. Get you all some close ups of Gorok here with this massive shield of Aeons there. He causes huge armor-piercing damage. Should make him get against most lords in a duel. He's got quite a lot of defense if we take a look here. It's 60 melee defense, 100 armor, and a very nice missile block chance. It's going to make him a very, very survivable tool in combat. Over here I've used the speed of our skink cohort to get a hold of some Skaven Slave Slingers. There are some regrouped clan rats heading this way. 
and I'm waiting for the magic on Croak to replenish, so that maybe once more I can send more of these Skaven into the Abyss via the Winds of Magic. Give them plenty of opportunity to worship the Great Horned Rat from their pathetic afterlife. These slave slingers would run if they knew it was good, but they're Skaven, so they don't. Entrails everywhere. What a beautiful fertilizer for our beautiful jungle. Alright, very decisive victory there. And no doubt in huge part to the fact that Lord Croak is absolutely amazing at destroying infantry. No less crappy Skaven infantry. He's even better. And the guy hardly needs to be better. He's, he's very, very good at what he does. He has a particular set of skills. Skills that make him a nightmare for blobs of infantry. Um, yeah, Liam Neeson stealing once again because... just because. Let's take a look at the um, skill set. I haven't really gotten a close look at Gorok's skill. Oh my goodness, I want this shield. Plus 60 armor? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. We will be definitely wanting to get that. Blessing of choice. So let's see what he's got up here. Hit extra 10 hit points. Or 10% hit points. 10 armor. Minus 20 upkeep. Ooh, my goodness, that's nice. Yeah, extra loot from post battle is also very good. Extra replenishment rate, untainted. The Blessing of Etzel, minus 20% upkeep for Pterodons, Rippers, Salamander and Razor Dons, Cold Ones, Ancient Sal... Holy cow. This is a very good skill set to have up here for him. Very good indeed. Our Saurus Warriors are going to be much stronger. Uh, much stronger than all of the surrounding enemies early. And sometimes I kind of like to immediately go for this type of thing. And I think I still will. Because having our Saurus Warriors be amazing means we can shove them all the way up to 9 and we don't necessarily need to replace them with Temple Guard anytime in the near future of the campaign. The other option we have is we could rush towards something like Geomantic Sustenance which would drop our upkeep even more still, allowing us to have more armies. And we may do that as, as time unfolds. Um, Route Marcher isn't necessarily a bad thing to get early on either. But I'm going to go ahead and start an Inspiring Presence, start working on Proud Warrior. And then we'll kind of go from there as we're able to unlock things. Let's attack Quetza here, where we know that the Skaven lurk. Take the settlement that rightfully belongs to Itza. And occupy it to cleanse it from the Skaven filth. We're able to get eight plaques there. And a thousand gold into the treasury. So the strength of Gorok is obviously Saurus Warriors. That's one of them, and we're going to play that. We're going to play it big time. And I'm going to do it by this and then later up here because this won't unlock until rank 10. And then let's see, Unrelenting Assault. Oh my goodness, Perfect Vigor. That is also fantastic. Some very nice... Oh my. 10 melee defense and physical resistance. Oh my. Merely a flesh wound. Replaces to the death. Wow. Terror and regeneration. Whoo! This is gonna be fun, ladies and gentlemen. This is gonna be fun. I hope you all are ready for this. Uh, let's just start off by lowering the magic cost of each of these by delivering upgrades here. Um, that way we can get more croak action into every battle. We have buildings to take care of. Good income to start with here. We do have golden idols here, which we need to take advantage of. And uh, we've got Kitax and Chakwa to finish off the entire province, so we will do that. Let's get in here and take advantage of these gold. It's the gold mining pit. And let's use our population surplus to upgrade to the Lizardman Plaza at Itza and end our turn. All right, we're now ready to research technology. If we uh, research one, we get another 500 gold. And if we search a ruined settlement, we can pick up 500 gold and six plaques. So as soon as we have the opportunity, I may do that. Let's begin our research. Obviously, we're 
Tablet of Spawning, we're a little bit limited. Lizardman research is based on these different buildings. So as we unlock these, we'll be able to research more. There are no rights available to us yet. Except for the right to kill Skaven at will. Which I fully embrace. We're still not going to be able to reach Shockwave. I didn't stop to replenish because they're just small settlements. Let's end another. A quick tip for people. I'm going to show this. Not because it's terribly cinematic, but some people still don't understand this. Um, the camera settings here, it's accessed by touching this, and it really has a big impact on your turn ends. And if you want to make your turn ends the fastest, you have to switch these to fastest. Now this controls individual factions. Don't mess with that one. Unless you really need to for a reason. But if you go to allied factions, and just turn all this off. Now the downside is, is you won't get any information during the turn end. It's just going to whip through the turn end. You'll have to do your own scouting and stuff as far as what's going on. You won't see if someone goes into an ambush stance. So what I do like to do is leave this enemy factions on low and then put it on fastest. So that's the only thing I really want to see is enemy factions. So again, I'm going to turn off here and fastest over here. See that? So now my camera will be uh, optimized for faster turn ins. All right, we were ambushed by Skaven that came out from Chakwa. We'll see who's really the hunter or the hunted here. Ambushed by Morphific. Gorok and Croak at the head of their column of Saurus. Ooh, what a sight. The temples in the background. A wonderful backdrop. Now, as for the armies of Morphific, they are quite large. We couldn't see everything because of the ambush. But here you can see the warlock. And here is his army. Many, many, many clan rats. With some skirmish contingent as well, and you can see them spreading wide across the jungle, headed our way. I'm a little bit uncertain as to why they deployed so far back, especially considering the reinforcements are coming from the opposite side of the map. So the AI is still with some quite strange behavior at times within the battle map. Now, as the ranks close, my Saros warriors, of course, will lead the charge against the clan rats, and this is a fight to which they are extremely well suited, and they are going to become quickly experienced and even stronger constantly. Now, Morphific has headed towards this flank within my Saros spearmen. I intend to single him out with Gorok, and there is a large blob amassing on my left flank, and I think you all know who is headed over to pay his respects to the infantry blob, drawn to them, much like a real toad would be to flies. Folks, that is just not going to get old at any rate. Croak immediately picking up 260 kills nearly, and Morphific Easily overmatched, but somewhat tanky for a Skaven. Say I'm moderately, moderately impressed that he's not dead. So Croak's decided to come over. Oof. Taking a beating with that mace. That shield and that mace. Just be horrendous to take shots from. So you can see that um, Gorok putting an absolute pounding on Morphific. The reinforcements are still a long ways off. And we're going to see that uh, these clan rats obviously just can't hold their own in this fight, especially not without the leadership that they so desperately need to stay in the fight. Hope you all don't mind some croak eye candy, because this campaign early is going to be full of it. We'll eventually want more skeek, uh, skinks with javelins. They're quite good against the Skaven skirmishers. They can catch them in melee, and they can also trade javelins with them. And they're good at running down... Um, faster units like the Skaven until you get cavalry. So the skink cohorts with javelins quite useful. I'm going to fast forward a bit until we engage the reinforcements. Now, a few minutes later, I've positioned my forces atop this hill, facing down the reinforcements. And my skinks with javelins are unloading their volleys here into some night runners. 
or gutter runners, actually, I believe. Yeah, no, night runners. I was correct. So unloading into the night runners. They don't really have any ammo left. And I'm going to send the great Saurus himself lone into combat to prove how valuable he is and how non-value. I was about to say invaluable, but that makes him sound good. To prove the lack of value of the Skaven. And Croak is going to help try and give you all some epic views here with Croak. It's like the gathering storm up there. Look at that lightning behind him. He's using his Shield of the Old Ones, and this will keep Gorok safe amidst some overwhelming odds in combat here, and he's going to lay down a tremendous beating, and as the Skaven gather, Croak's magic will be unleashed upon a massive blob of Skaven. Just enjoy. Whenever all my fancy hardware starts to die in frame rate, you know that Croak done good. With just enough magic left over, he nukes the Skaven one last time and comes up with a tremendous number of kills. Morphific and Toxide learned very quickly that ambushing a giant, what I think is mostly dead toad, who knows insane magic? Yeah. Probably not the smartest idea, but they're Skaven, and they are acting in character right now, being nincompoopishly crappy. <laughs> Scheming, but not quite hitting the mark. Chakwa is ours, and we will now be ready to continue to take the entire province. Take a look at the uh, building situation throughout the great northern northern great jungle, and see how we want to prioritize. Obviously, we'll want to use Itza for military and other such use, while Chakwa and Ketza are going to be focused towards growth and income. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the gold mine. I think this is always a good spend on money. If we upgrade here, we can get more Saurus Warriors with shields, which is going to be the backbone staple of our army. We need Tier 3 in order to unlock Cavalry, but that will be a high priority for me. We can build a Spawn Pools of the Chosen in one of the smaller settlements, so we will save that for that occasion. There's really nothing else we can build here at the moment. Um, we may tear it down later. But I think for now, I'm going to go ahead and build this Skink Favelas and the extra growth here so that we can just get this, uh, get this entire province leveled up faster. Obedience brings victory. We'll expand our leadership war, but I'm not worried about our leadership against Skaven. What I want is for our Saros warriors to become insanely efficient in this army. You can see they're already working on that. They already start with very high weapon strength, and now they're gaining melee attack and defense. We can pump that second skill point into there, Proud Warrior now complete. And I think with Proud Warrior complete, I may um, move on through uh, some of this blue down here while we're working our way up to level 10 and can open some of the special abilities. As for Lord Croak, I'm going to continue to try and drop the magic cost of these Deliverance of Itza spells as a first priority because they can pretty much destroy armies single-handedly. Now if we use this right, our melee uh, defense goes up and we become unbreakable. An expert charge defense as well. Very handy. Uh, this one could be pretty good right now because um, we're going to be fighting and we want to gain the experience early. Uh, but I'm going to hold on to these. I don't need them just yet. Got another mission here, Rock in a Hard Place. It wants me to destroy Clan Fester. I'm happy to carry that out. We get 10 plaques and quite a lot of gold. As far as plaques go, we're doing okay-ish so far. The public order is poor um, in this province as a whole. There is quite a garrison of Itza, though, so I'm not horribly worried about losing our capital, at least not at the moment. Trying to see where we would actually enter in to the territory of the next province here at Kitax. 
Let's just uh, stay in Force March so we can cover as much ground as possible. A bit risky if we were to run into a large Skaven force. And some of you may be wondering why I'm not recruiting yet. I'm waiting until I'll be able to recruit the Saurus with shields. Alright, so we finished the mission to research a technology. Picking up some money there. We got a new mission issued, which is to build a holy ziggurat. Which is going to be a little ways off. Um, Clan Fester came out, but was too cowardly to attack the protectors. The servants of the old ones here. Um, two of their armies came out, so I know they have another army. This one was left in a bad position. It, the auto-resolve treated me very unfairly there. However, gave a ton of kills to Gorok. Uh, because I auto-resolved rather than fighting that, I'm actually going to have to fall back, replenish a turn, and then push forward because I know there's another army along with the garrison. Let's get Route Marcher. It'll help us get around the campaign map faster. And let's upgrade Deliverance of Itza 3. It's going to drop the Winds of Magic cost by 3, and then we'll roll through a second upgrade, probably starting with number 2, since it's going to be quite common, then 3, then 1. I use 1 the least, and then we'll want to focus on this one dropping the cooldown to the Supreme Shield of the Old Ones, as that is a very powerful ability. Now remember, our focus is on Saurus. This is going to add an additional 5 melee defense. will be a solid way to focus our efforts we have a considerable amount of funding. Let's use it to upgrade buildings um, while we have the opportunity. Now, we could save all of this for upgrading Itza to the, to the Ziggurat. Um, let me see here. It's four turns till we get the surplus. Let's go ahead and build this so we can, we can build a growth building here. We can upgrade this growth building and drive growth a whole lot faster overall. Exactly what I was thinking, The Rock. Borg Zap Scuttle needs to get his crap out of my presence. Another mission issued. Sign a non-aggression pact with the Southern Sentinels. Well, let's see if the Southern Sentinels wish to talk. They seem amenable. As lizards should. We should treat each other with respect. I'll go ahead and give them their payment even. There will be other lizard factions around Laxlen to our north. Let's ally with them. We don't wish to fight other lizards. We have plenty of other enemies. Looks like some of these factions. Let's check the spirit of the jungle. See if Nakai. Nakai wishes to cooperate. It's a good croc. Lizards work together here, so we completed that mission. It still leaves four here. Maintain control of two provinces, that's a ways out. Search the ruined settlement. Destroy Clan Fester, which we're working on. And then build the Holy Ziggurat, which we are also working on actively. Now, I could recruit more units, but with Croak, I'm feeling quite capable. And we indeed find a rather weak Skaven um, army here. Now, some might say, well, here, they outnumber you a lot. Yeah, well, we've got Croak. One Croak greater than all these Skaven. You can see we're outside of Key Tax, the Skaven having ruined the settlement in the background. Hope you all are enjoying the 2560 by 1440p resolution. It's back to stay. I hadn't used it in a long time because I was going for higher frame rates, but holy crap, as soon as I turned it back on, just realized how much better it looks. I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice frame rates a little bit. This should still look very good for you all. So Gorok and Croak are going to be facing their first real challenge of the campaign. The Skaven outnumber us massively. I'll show you their numbers here. You can see it. So there's almost 2,000 Skaven to my only 375 Lizardmen warriors carrying the banner for Itza. You see that the Skaven are going to summon some clan rats behind us and have my Skeet co Skink cohort begin to deal with them. And I'll send some reinforcements back. I, want, I need to win fights convincingly. So I will have to uh, make sure that we focus the Skaven out where possible. And we're going to need to create as big a blob as possible or else we very well could lose this fight. To so the fact that I don't have any large, fast-moving, high-mass units, 
so I won't be able to easily single out all three Skaven leaders that will be present. They're all on foot. So Croak's magic is going to be absolutely critical here for to meet success. Another Skaven summon behind my Saurus. It's not good. This is just turning even more numbers against us. Huge numbers against us. There's some Gutter Runner Slingers that'll be sitting back. And here's the first Warlord that's going to be facing me. I'm going to go head-to-head -head with him. I want Gorok to take this guy out of the fight as quickly as possible. With the leadership gone, it's a lot easier to get rid of Skaven. You can see that they have some Poison Wind Globadiers back there that are actually probably just causing more damage to their own units right now than anything. And having defeated the Clan Rat Summon, you can see that we're beautifully creating a nice blob of infantry on our right flank. I'm going to put off the shield of the old ones here to keep my troops protected as best as possible as they are fighting against some huge odds. Gorok is out on his own right now, and quite frankly, he's going to have to just take a little bit of damage and tank until Lord Croak takes care of business, which will happen here. The warp stone in the background. Skaven obviously ingesting too much of it for them to actually think that this battle was potentially winnable for them. Now, uh, there is a Plague Priest. He's using Bless with Filth. He is filthy. Here he is back here. I say a Plague Priest, a Grey Seer with a Plague Lore there. The Skaven Warlord is actually holding out phenomenally well, all things considered. So I'm going to send Croak in. And because of the giant... Uh, spell from Croak. We have cleaned up one flank of Skaven, though they are likely to come back from routing. And I'm just short on infantry. My infantry is doing a stellar job. There's just not enough of them. And the Skaven are using their huge vermin tide here to slowly but surely overpower my troops by sheer numbers. As you can see it up here, Skaven still controlling the balance bar despite my having killed nearly half of them. See here, they're getting blessed with filth again, which is going to take away weapon damage, hurt my troops quite a bit. The Warlord is nearly dead. A few more good hits, and Gorok should be able to send him packing. I would say that that was indeed a pretty solid hit. See, the Poison Wind Globadier is actually now shooting into the back of some of my infantry. This is going to be way too damaging. I can't allow that to take place. So I'm going to have to redirect Croak, albeit he is one slow toad. And I'm going to have to just hopefully be lucky to catch those skirmishers. The Warlord is faster than my units and he's able to escape. It's not good for me because then I don't get the, uh, the extra leadership penalty against the Skaven for having lost their leader. The Grey Seer, meanwhile, used his lightning to pretty good effect. But he is now routing as well. So two of the leaders for the Skaven off the battlefield. But there are plenty more Skaven remaining for me to fight. You see as I defeat them... Their different units are going to regroup and continue to bring the fight back to me. Korok should be able to hold his infantry for quite some time, or hold this blob of infantry for quite some time. It's very tanky. His melee defense will give him some pretty solid protection. See a group of clan rats with spears here making their way towards Lord Croak. This is not exactly type of fight that Croak wants to be in here. Fighting skirmishers, I'm okay with that, so I'm going to go ahead and use the Deliverance of Itza. It's just a level 1, but since the Skaven are so bottled up here, it should be quite effective. So that's going to clear out the troops around Lord Croak and save him from taking any additional damage. My largest unit of Saurus Warriors still remaining is the Spear Unit, and they've killed many, many Skaven, working their way towards a couple of hundred kills. Croak has a tremendous number of kills already. It's 645. And folks, it's not over yet. This Saurus Warrior unit is essentially fighting to the death. Sometimes rampaging, but certainly making their lord proud. Speaking of their lord, Gorok, the huge Saurus, is now making his way towards this other fight. The Grey Seer is hiding in the background, and I do not wish him to be replenishing his winds of magic or using any of his fell powers against me any longer. However, in that case, he did quite a good job at cleaning up some of his own troops for me, so maybe I should leave him alone. You can see Lord Croak in a very, very slow foot race with these Poison Wind Globadiers. Eventually, I'll have to turn back off that. 
not exactly looking forward to the damage I'll take in the process. So the fight is definitely becoming a challenge, albeit it is certainly not desperate at this point, unless they get left with nothing but the skirmishers and I can't get them to leadership route. That's why it's so important that I killed that Gracier there. See his filthy body twitching on the ground. So that will certainly hurt the leadership of all the remaining Skaven, and with this large unit of Sara Spears left down here, we should be able to try and turn this battle back in. I'm going to give Gorok some protection. He's taking a lot of fire from these Night Runners over here. Not an ideal situation for him, and he's also taking a bunch of them in melee. And on these higher difficulty levels, never underestimate Skaven, Skirmishers, and melee. They can do a lot more damage to you than you might otherwise expect. The Deliverance of Itza, going to try and get rid of some of these skirmishers, however they move and end up taking almost no damage here. I suppose that's what I get for not targeting units that were affixed. That was a waste of magic to be sure. Let's take a look at the health of Gorok. You can see the balance bar swinging in my favor. Still decent health. Fortunately for me, Gorok does have a pretty huge missile block chance. That's 661 kills on Croak. I can now move these uh, spearmen up. I'm unable to catch these gutter runners, and they are getting some good shots as they run away on these Saurus, which are fought down to the last two units here. So I'm rather tough fighting for them. As these units regroup and then are forced to come fight me and die, it should only help the balance bar, and the balance bar is what we need to win this at the moment. And it should be about to happen, despite us taking damage I have too much left, and the Skaven at Kitax flee, and we take the city. Those Skaven weren't worth their weight in feces. Over 700 kills with Lord Croak, and I somehow doubt that that's going to be the highest figure he achieves in this campaign. Unfortunately, we did lose a Saros warrior with shield that had a silver chevron. That makes me a bit sad, but we have accomplished the goal for this episode, which is to unite the North er, northern Great Jungle under the banner of Itza, and we have destroyed Clan Fester, thus completing the mission regarding them and helping to purify the jungles of the rat filth. You can now see that we are in possession of Kitax, and uh, we have options becoming available to us. I'm going to get more growth started in a skink foraging camp here. And I'm going to go ahead and upgrade key tax. This will give us max growth where we can get Itza built up to the Holy Ziggurat very quickly in the next episode. We're going to expand our trade resources as well. So we've got everything underway, and it's also time to expand our army. A little bit beyond time, but I figured we could use the strength of the great Lord Croak to make it through this battle. And I'm going to uh, get a nice... Uh, melee contingent of Saurus with shields here, and then we'll do a bit of reinforcing the flanks with some additional skink with javelin cohort. This ought to be a good starting army. I will see you all in the next episode. If you enjoyed this, take the time to go down and leave a comment. Tell me what you want to see. Answer the question of where this campaign should go, what you liked about this episode, anything I need to do different. And if you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, we'll go smash the thumbs down. So I know that I need to do better. And if you want to see more, make sure you've subscribed. Hit those notifications, and there will be more soon. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.